multiplying and dividing terms. The key thing here really is, remember your index laws. Okay, remember your index laws. So that's just a bit of a, a mental tag for you. If you're kind of like, wait, what is this? You had a whole topic on indices in year 9 and year 10. So this is what we're kind of calling back to. Okay? So let's do a few examples very briefly. Let me just pull these up. Okay, so we'll have a look at something like this. This is... Oh yeah, I'm so glad you let passed. Every second letter, as opposed to every single letter, that's really inconvenient that they have the same acronym. But anyway, uh, I don't mind if you start at A or B. Um, it's really funny because um, junior students tend to think, "Whoa, it's awesome! I can skip a whole question." Of course, you end up doing the same number of questions because you can do half. That's the important thing. Uh, one of the things you will notice is that, generally speaking, most textbooks give you a stupid number of questions, more than you possibly need. So I, I sort of want to get on with this, especially being that you know, you know most of this. This is like stuff you've already addressed. I just want you to remember, the other advantage of this is that when you want to review, like you come back in like three, four weeks time, and I can't remember this stuff, you don't need to like ask for another sheet or something like that. You just do the other questions, the ones you didn't do before. So it's a pretty simple sort of strategy. Start at A, C, E, G, whatever. We'll start at B. Okay, let's have a go at this then. So, the first thing I want to notice is, I've just got two terms, I'm multiplying them together. Please note, you should make a big deal out of my x's, they look like that. You might like to draw your x's like this. The one thing you cannot draw your x's like is that, and I hope that the reason for that is pretty clear. Okay, so be nice and unambiguous. We want to deal with two different parts of this, right? We want to deal with the numbers. And then we want to deal with the x's, okay? Now we have two names for those, and I'd love you to write them down underneath here for me. So firstly, the numbers out the front here attached to the x's, we call them the coefficients. You might have heard of that word before, coefficients. They're the numbers attached out the front. Then of course, you've got the x's, and we've got different names for those. The most common one that you'll come up with is, and you'll definitely know this, is prenumerals. But they're often also called variables. I'm going to put a question mark on that one because they're not always variables. Sometimes it's actually just a number. For instance, there's a really famous number that we use this symbol for, right? That's algebra 2, kind of. It's a pronumeral, but it's not a variable. Like, it's one number, and everyone agrees that it's 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So that's why I'm putting that little question mark there, but I want you to clue in. Sometimes they'll use that word, and this is what they're referring to. Okay. So the reason I've highlighted that there's two of them is because we want to do them in turn. Coefficients, just by convention, we put them out first. You've got a three there. That one's obvious. This one's not so obvious because there's a number hiding in there. What's the number that's not written? It's a one, right? So I've got negative one and three. Negative one times three, of course, is negative three. So I've dealt with the coefficients. Naturally, if I had more numbers along and multiplied by another term, I'd just string along all of those, deal with the coefficients to do it. And now I've dealt with those. I'll move on to my pronumerals. I've got an x squared here and an x there. So thinking back to your index laws, what happens when you multiply numbers with the same base? You add the indices, right? So I've got a 2 here, and again, see you guys, I've got an index hiding there, right? So you add them, what index do you end up with? 3. Okay, x cubed. Now they're finished, okay? Not complicated. Multiplication is very, very simple. We're good at multiplication. Let's move on to a division example. We will make this one a little more involved, shall we? <laughs> okay, so here's our division. Now you might find it a bit easier for yourself if you pop this in as a fraction, because then you can do you cancel it, it's a lot easier to keep track of everything. So I'm gonna write that like so. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. It just makes it a bit simpler to compare the terms that I'm interested in. So again, just like before, we'll do coefficients, then pronouns. You've got a 7 and a 14. Anyone want to suggest what we can do with that? 2. Good. I'm going to get a 2. Where am I going to get a 2? Two? Two. Use, use the right word. I'm going to get it on the denominator, right? This 7 cancels with this. That leaves me with 2. That's good. 
Again, I've got these kinds of things happening here, and this is a perfect time to explain why. When I'm dividing, because of the opposite of multiplication, what I do with the indices? What's the index law that comes with that? I subtract, right? Now, to make it obvious why I take away, you can see, what is m squared like? It's an abbreviation. It's an abbreviation for what? m times n, very good. I'm actually just going to write that in here. And you can see, obviously, right, when you do the same cancelling thing you did before, but this time for the pretty rules, 1n cancels here, 1n cancels here, right? So you get left over with that 1. Now, I've got um, a couple of ways that I can now write my answer. The first thing is I'll just leave it as a fraction, right? So that's 1 over 2n. The question isn't asking you to, but I'm going to. The question began without fractions, right? So being that it began without fractions, I'm not going to leave my answer in a fraction. So how would I write this without fractions? Again, think back to your index laws. This is a bit trickier. Hmm. Sam, do you know your guess? Do you put to the power of minus one? Okay, so I have everything on this denominator, right? And I do put everything to the power of minus one. Why do I do that? This is about division, right? So if I just thought about this without doing it as a fraction, right? I'll just put it down in parallel over here. Okay. Unless you. 7 divided by 14, which is going to be a half, okay? But when you deal with these powers, you told me to subtract the powers. Because there's division happening here, right? Do you see why you end up with a minus 1? You've got 1, take away 2. Are you seeing how it's coming there? So that's m to the power of minus 1, which is the same as m on the bottom. The way I remember it is you cross the line, you change the sign. Okay? So when you have something on the bottom here, that's the same as a negative index. Okay? So either of those, this guy here, or this guy here, or this guy here, they're all the same answer, and they're simplified as far as we possibly can. We've cancelled out everything. really kind of depends on how the question gets handed to you, how you answer back. Okay? I think probably this might be the best one because it's indices. Like that. 